everyone, continuing our theme of cheesy sci-fi films, we're covering Teenagers from Outer Space from 1959. Yes, uh, Tom Grief brings us a film that he also wrote directed, edited, and probably shot on camera as well. And we get the story of a group of aliens who have landed on Earth who basically want to use the Earth to grow these aliens that they eat, the Gorgons, okay, these, these kind of lobster creatures, right? Well, there's humanity on the planet, and one of the guys in the group kind of likes humanity. See, their whole society is kind of... Uh, uh, removed emotion and, and tried to become, you know, this really cold and, and calculating and, and perfect race, if you will. A nice underlying t tone there for uh, the perfect race, you know. And, and so they're they, they don't care about humanity, they just care about getting their red lobster on. Well, when one of them ventures off with the, one of the local girls, uh, he ends up becoming enamored with her and follows her around town. Well, he gets his commander to follow him around town with his death ray where he's taking out people, and we get to see the events unfold from there as the lobster creatures grow larger and larger. Uh, <laughs> teenagers from Outer Space is great because I'm trying to figure out where the teenagers are. Uh, the guys who crash land all look like they're in their 20s or 30s uh you know so they're not really teenagers uh but they try to play off as being younger you know and so you've got a bunch of people in here probably you don't know the only face you may recognize is harvey b dunn who was in bride of the monster an ed wood film now uh, there's a lot of people that said tom grafe who worked on this had a lot of influence from ed wood and that ed wood even had his fingers in the pot in making this film well you know, you look at and watch this film, it definitely has hints of Ed Wood in there from Plan 9 from Outer Space with things being so dark, yet it's really light out. Uh, you, you know, almost all the girls are always in swimsuits. And, and uh, the way they're portrayed, too, I mean, this girl, she's got a friend in the pool, and when they leave, uh, her and her new alien friend leave, the uh, evil commander comes and shows up, and this girl just, oh, hey, yeah, you're just a strange guy in a jumpsuit. Want to hop in the pool with me? You know, of course... She gets the skeleton treatment, which I love the skeleton effect. Back to a simpler time, folks, when you didn't need to see everything on screen. This definitely worked within their budget. Basically, shot of person. Shot of guy going zap, zap. Not saying zap, zap, but close enough. And then shot back, and suddenly the person's a skeleton. You see a skeleton there, you know? And your mind can put together, oh, they got turned into a skeleton. Didn't have to see it. Still a great effect, and really helped uh, bring some of the terror, if you will, to this sci-fi film. Because back in the 50s, space seemed to be the big scary thing back then. And they definitely, movie makers, exploited that fear to the utmost, even in this low-budget fare of this nature. Uh, you know, the effects I did like, though, with the skeletons. Uh, you know, you got the props. The aliens, it's funny, one of them wore like a regular jet uh, pilot helmet. So, you know, it's good to know the aliens also are using same technology we are. And, oh, and the Gorgon, the, the lobsters that they grow, one of them grows a full size, and so it's this big monster. And how do they do the effect? Well, we're talking low, no budget here. So they take a rear projection, and it's a silhouette of this lobster being held. And the lobster's going after the people on screen who are acting like it's there. And it's just this shadow here like this, you know, it's just a shadow of a beast right <laughs> it's just oh it's great folks teenagers from outer space uh, you get out of it what you can it, it's funny cheesy it does move along there's not a whole lot of slow points it does tell a story but man let me tell you it definitely has an edward fingerprint on it so if you're a fan of those films you should definitely check it out and then i'm about to do it for us here to final cut till next time